Okay. Hi, everyone. Thank you again for joining us tonight. I'm really excited to see everyone here for another one of our virtual monthly meetings. Uh, we have a pretty full agenda tonight, so I'm going to jump right in. Um, I will say our treasurer, Eric, is not here yet. He'll be arriving a little bit later. Um, so we've got a couple items, of course, on the agenda each month, like the treasurer's report. And tonight we'll be having an update from our audit committee. Uh, we're just going to bump those ahead on the agenda a bit just until Eric has joined us. Um, so if this is the first time you're joining us for a, one of our Zoom meetings, just a reminder to please keep your microphones muted unless you're presenting or unless we've opened the floor for questions, comments. Um, that'll just help us prevent any background noise and make sure everyone can hear those who are speaking. Um, if you do forget to mute or you accidentally unmute, I may just mute you during the meeting. No, no offense meant, just want to make sure we can keep everything uh, clean for everyone who's part of the meeting. Uh, so I will go ahead and um, share the agenda again in chat. I know a few people have joined us since I did that. So here is a copy of tonight's agenda as well as our treasurer's reports. Again, we'll go over those in detail when Eric um, has joined us. But until then, we're actually going to skip right ahead to our guest presentation tonight. Uh, we have Tony from the City of Columbus. Tony, I think you may have someone else with you as well. Um, he's going to speak for about 10 minutes or so, give some information to us about zoning, and then we'll open the floor for some questions, which I'm sure folks will have questions. This is always a, a hot topic. So, um, Tony, take it away. Thanks, Jess. Um, I'm going to pull up my screen, if you all don't mind, and and uh, share a screen with you all. Um, be able to see that, my uh, zoning code update? Sure can. Fantastic. Okay. Um, thank, thank you, Jess, and thank you all for giving me uh, a few minutes of time tonight. Uh, my name is Tony Celebrezzi. I'm the Assistant Director of the Building and Zoning Services Department. Uh, Kevin Wheeler was going to join us, but he had a, uh, another meeting come up. Uh, both he and I are spending a lot of evenings talking to area commissions and civic groups uh, about this uh, zoning code update project that uh, we have begun to, uh, to embark upon as a city. So a little bit of, of history here for folks that, um, just for folks in general. In 1950, this is what our city of Columbus looked like. You know, where we were, I believe, less than 300,000, right at 375,000 people and less than 50 square miles. Uh, as you can see, a lot of the other uh, municipalities around here were significantly smaller at that point too. Uh, jump ahead 70 years and look at how Columbus is now covers 224 square miles and many of those uh, suburbs have grown significantly also. Um, and our population right now in Columbus is over 900,000. So we've had a huge jump, and the reason why 1950 is is um, is pertinent, and as a, and I'll point, bring up the next slide here, in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, we had a very aggressive annexation policy. Uh, a number of different reasons for it. That's for history to debate, but that's not for my, my debate tonight. Basically, the part that uh, that is important in this chart is by the 80s through the 2010s we have not had a very aggressive annexation for a multitude of reasons, including uh, there are a lot of vacant lots and, re and underutilized parcels within the city of Columbus that, uh, that we need to turn our attention to that already have infrastructure uh, and utilities uh, that service them. So um, at the same time, if you look at the chart on the right, the population in 1950 um, is under 400,000, like I said, about 375, and you go up and it continues in this upward trend without any type of uh, indication that, that it's going to uh, that it's going to stop. Uh, by the end of this decade we're in, we will be over a million people just in the city of Columbus, uh, let alone the entire region uh, is also scheduled to uh, or projected to grow significantly. So. So we've got those trends going on. So we talked about, or talked about how many residents there are, and then we've got a lot of infill uh, and redevelopment opportunities. We're not going to be doing a lot of territorial expansion. We do some. Uh, if you remember that chart or that second map, the northeast quadrant of the city and the southwest quadrant have got huge numbers, large numbers of what I call township islands, where the city is annexed all around them. 
And so there's a lot of a lot of times um, areas there that do end up annexing in. Um, a big challenge that everybody is facing right now is the rising housing costs and the lack of supply. Um, we've got lack of supply. We continue to have people that want to move here to Central Ohio and to Columbus, and we have not kept pace with residential units. Um, part of that is the cost of materials. Part of that is the zoning code, trying to navigate through that. Uh, another part of that is also the fact that, that the, um, the stock of skilled trades individuals, skilled trades workers, to actually build those homes is, is, is getting older and it's not being resupplied. We are working with City of Columbus on some internship programs and train and apprentice type programs. Uh, and hopefully a number of skilled trades people will continue to rise. People make really good living. Uh, as skilled trades people in, in Central Ohio. Um, we've got the issue of transportation uh, options, um, continue to work with CODA to try to enhance the transportation options because many of the people that where they work and where they live, there's significant differences uh, as far as transportation, trying to get from point A to point B. Um, and, uh, you know, I talked about the increase, there's a demand for more multifamily we're actually seeing a continued increase in demand for multifamily, smaller homes uh, and smaller lots. Uh, and a lot of that has to do with aging population, wanting to leave the four or five bedroom house and retire to something that's easier to maintain. Uh, and we're seeing a big trend of uh, young kids that were coming of age just uh, right after the recession in 2008, 2009, and they have a bit of an aversion to home ownership. They prefer multifamily. They prefer, uh, you know, a large, larger unit or larger uh, uh, building with and renting. So we're having to to uh, consider that. Um, walkable neighborhoods is another attribute that many people, and we're seeing it in the survey that we put out. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. And unfortunately, not all of our neighborhoods have enjoyed the prosperity that some have. Uh, and so we've got those are all trends that we need to look at. We need to figure out how does the zoning code help to make this more equitable. So we've got a, a series of questions that Kevin and I, Kevin Wheeler and I both work on and, and actually quite frankly the mayor is the one that put it to us is how will we grow? Where are people going to live? Where are they going to work? Where are they going to play? Uh, and then how are they going to get around uh, that? And what will the neighborhoods look like? Um, Every we have so many unique neighborhoods throughout the city, um, and we don't want to lose that character because that's a lot of reason why folks live in the areas that they do is because they like the character, they like the attributes of that. Um, you know, and I kind of mentioned a couple of the, the work that is underway now with projects with Link Us, working with CODA and a like regional housing strategy. But my focus is trying to figure out how does the zoning code help make development, help guide development in the city in such a way that we benefit, all of us benefit from more jobs, more people here, but at the same time, protecting the integrity uh, and atmosphere of many of our different communities. So I know that you all are involved a, a bit in our, in the zoning code process, dealing with variances. Uh, but as you know, zoning, like I said, kind of guides, guides development. Where is a building placed on a parcel? What kind of setbacks, what kind of lot size and parking restrictions or parking spaces are required? Things along those lines. And so we've got to figure out how to use that and harness that guidance to help the city uh, with, more, with better investments, uh, more jobs, and ensuring those jobs are spread out so that everybody can, can have access to those. Um, let's see. So, uh, so the, the only other piece on this, this uh, slide that, that is really majorly pertinent is the current zoning code we have dates to the early 50s. Zoning, the development trends we're seeing today were not, never even contemplated in the 1950s. Uh, as the walkable neighborhood, whereas back then it was a lot of car-centric and car-focused. Um, now, that's not to say we haven't adjusted the zoning code since for 70 years. We've, we've tweaked it where we needed to, we've dealt some changes, but a comprehensive review of the entire code and figuring out 
what are the detract what are the negatives of it and how do we go about changing it so that everybody can prosper and the city as a whole can prosper. So um, so that's that so zoning is essentially this is quick zoning is essentially a combination of what's actually in the zoning text, what does it say, and then the zoning map. Because obviously we want to try to keep commercial thing, commercial parcels, zone parcels along transportation corridors. We want to try to segregate manufacturing and industrial parcels from residential. Um, and so that's, that's essentially what the zoning looks like for us. Um, we've got a kind of a goal here that we're not kind of we do have a goal about ensuring that the, the city priorities for growth and equity and affordable housing, job creation, neighborhood vitality, sustainability are all are all helped and uh, enhanced by the zoning code. Uh, right now, they're not. Uh, to be perfectly fair, perfectly honest with you, um, the, the zoning code that we come out of this project with should be accommodate the future growth. Figure out how we how the rest of us how we want the city to, to grow. And that when I say we, I mean the city of Columbus, not just a couple of city staff people working in a vacuum. Um, how do we figure out affordable housing strategies and promote equity? Um, how do we encourage zoning or job centers that are spread out, not all in downtown area? Um, you know, we right now we rely heavily on variances and many overlays in special districts. Um, and we need to look at that. Can we come up with a more standard, predictable set of standards uh, for the different areas, for the commercial overlays, and, and reduce the number of variances? Because essentially what we're doing, we do a variance, you're making a unique zoning district for that one single parcel, and that's kind of defeats the purpose of having the zoning code to begin with. Um, at the same time, we've got to figure out how we continue to have the public review process going on. People should have a say so in depending on how, in how things develop in their neighborhood. And how do we ensure, as I said earlier, the integrity of our neighborhood? Uh, dealing with design guidelines and then of course enhanced transit. Those are all things that, that, that we're, we are trying to keep in the back of our mind as we're going through this uh, zoning code update. Now we've broken this up into two different phases. We're in phase one, started in December, and we'll go through this summer. We hired a, um, a consultant, Lisa Wise Consulting. Uh, her team is made up of a, a number of individuals. Uh, a couple of them have actually done, uh, were zoning officials in some larger cities when they did their zoning code rewrites. And we are working with them. They are conducting interviews. They did about 70 interviews with elected officials, city leaders, community leaders, members of area commissions, and others, um, trying to get a, get a grasp on what is out there, what are people feeling like when they're going through and having to deal with the zoning code, whether it's a professional attorney that works with it every day, or like you and I, a simple landowner that may need a variance for a higher garage or something along those lines. Um, and then on top of that, we do have a, a survey that, I'll, again, I'll talk about that in a minute here. Um, but basically, phase one is a technical assessment of how do we go about changing the code. We will look for this report to, to come to us in June. Uh, we've got weekly conversations with the Lisa Wise group. Um, but bottom line is by June, we should have a, a report that gives us some direction, gives us a strategy of how to move forward. Uh, and then from there, we will move into phase two. Phase two is going to take somewhere between 18 and 24 months. It is not going to be a fast process. It is not going to be a um, vacuum process. We are going to be coming out to area commissions and civic groups on a very regular basis, bringing concepts, ideas, maybe focus on one section at a time as we develop new language for the zoning code and then ask for your input back. And then we take that input and we bring it back to the, the internal team and try to synthesize that and figure out, are we in the, going in the right direction or are we not? And then do we need to redirect? Do we need to step back and go back to the drawing board on that particular part or not? So um, phase two is going to have heavy, um, heavy uh, stakeholder engagement. 
not only one on one groups, but a lot of a lot of meetings, Zoom meetings like this, and potentially we'll be back to having face to face meetings someday, I would assume. Um, so that is those are the two uh, the two phases of this uh, program or this project. Um, Jess, did you all get the email that had the link to the survey or Aaron, did you forward that out? Yes, I was just going to ask you. We shared that on our Facebook uh, about a month ago, but if you're still taking um, responses, I will actually share that in the chat right now. Perfect. Yeah, we, we have a, a, a survey. We stood up for 30 days uh, and then we took all the comments and all of the, um, the results of that. We packaged it up uh, Monday and gave it to the consultant team for them to start to digest. Um, however, we, we got such great comments because we had a lot of text boxes for people to type whatever they wanted in there. Uh, I usually spend about an hour and a half every week going through the previous week's survey results. We got such great feedback and thought, well thought out ideas that we chose to keep that open for at least for another 30 days because we want as many people as possible to give us our feedback. We need to know what you're thinking. We need to know what folks are thinking. I can pretend like I know what I'm talking about, but I don't live in your neighborhood. Um, I can tell you all about mine, but so please, if you have, have 10, 11 minutes, very short survey, ask for a lot of rankings of things, uh, what you find more important than others. And then like I said, a lot of text boxes where you can, uh, can write, write all you want and um, take that survey, fill it out. At the end, I encourage you, if you want to keep, uh, want to get regular week or regular updates from uh, the code team, um, give us your email address and we will make sure that we, one, keep that internal to just the code project and we will um, provide you with updates on a regular basis, probably uh, let you know, we probably will end up redoing the, the survey at some point to come up with some additional ideas. Um, I will uh, just send you this, this slide deck so you can circulate that to everybody that you want. Uh, and my name, uh, email address, Kevin's name and email address is on the last slide, along with um, the web page for the zoning update. On there is, that, is the, uh, the survey link, but also about a half dozen other critical documents that we are working through and working on. So. Um, basically, with that, um, I am done with the with that portion of my show. And anybody has questions, I'm more than happy to answer it. I will just say this: a lot of people come up with questions the next day after they've had a chance to sleep on it. Call me. I'm on the, my my number is is on the contact uh, page for building the zoning services. Use my email. You'll get me. Trust me. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, if anyone does have some questions, if you want to use the hand raise feature, I'll make sure to call on you. Um, and then Tony is assuming it's all right with you. We'll actually share this slide deck uh, on our website, on our zoning committee page, just so folks have got access to it and can reach out if they'd like to. Please do. Wonderful. Thank you. I don't see any hands raised. Oh, Amy Ivanoff, I see your, your actual hand raised. Okay. I'm curious about how much the uh, zoning commission is uh, listening to or supporting or taking uh, into consideration the neighborhood, the neighbors, the, the citizens, as opposed to the builders. Do we have any power? Because Are you referring the to development commission and building bo um, a board of zoning adjustment? Right, right. Okay. Uh, yeah. Do we have well, any I, power at all, or do we just, you know, lay down and listen to the plans? They listen. They listen. They take. You know, we we provide staff comments back from a from a city standpoint. Uh, that, that, and they are they're not part of this process. Some of them have been interviewed, but they're not part of the zoning code update process. Um, okay. Eventually, development commission will have to listen be, uh, because we have to run all of our zoning all of our code changes through them. Mm -hmm. um, but they try to they try to take a building or a board of zoning adjustment BZA has got five criteria they're supposed to look at based on a Supreme Court case uh, for what they uh, how they should be judging things. Uh, Development Commission is again is a recommendation body to council as you all or as the area commissions are 
recommendation bodies to council. Mm -hmm. And I always, in a couple of strategies for folks, when they don't like something, one, to participate and, and make, um, you know, your, your, your um, reasons um, known to them. Uh, you can send those, you can send them in through emails or letters to our staff. All that gets put together in a packet that go to all the, the members. You can also obviously testify. And if, and we do the three minute testimony piece. If you have longer testimony, get a couple, three people. There's nothing to say that you can't do three minutes and get, get, get the buzzer and the next person stands up, stands up, quote unquote, and picks up right where you left off and continues down the same thing, just a domino effect. I, I encourage folks to do that all the time. Um, that way you don't repeat, but also you're able to put out more information without being rushed. So a little coordination on your testimony part. Okay, one other thing. Um, I think it was two years ago, but with COVID, I'm not sure, maybe three. Um, there was a concern about Marion Franklin and um, Seabird Elementary being closed. I think there were a couple of other schools as well. I volunteer at Seabird Elementary and I have a friend who teaches at Marion Franklin. I went to the meeting with, at Marion Franklin, which was packed. Absolutely, there, people were parking on lawns down the street. Uh, and um, my heart goes out to those people. There was talk about combining Marion Franklin and South High School, which would be a disaster. Seabird Elementary has about 350 students and 15 different languages speak, spoken in that school. Those children would fall through the cracks if that school was closed down. What I recommend, and I saw, and I wrote this down because you said it, we need skilled tradesmen. We need plumbers and electricians and builders. And Marion Franklin, it would seem to me, would be a great place for programs like that. Those kids don't need to learn how to be computer graphics stars. They need to learn a trade that's gonna support them. And I don't know why that's not happening there. So I'm just putting that in your ears. I, I, can, I can definitely relate and appreciate that because uh, as I said, not everybody needs to go to college. Not everybody needs, as you said, to be a graphic designer. There are a lot of people that prefer to work with their hands and are very good with it and good at it. And we need to get them skilled and we need to get them trained. And I know, I know the uh, um, you know management side of the building industry is working on some projects. I know the unions are. We have got some efforts with Columbus City Schools um, to to uh, ro make their program a little more robust and get more kids through there. So I agree with you wholeheartedly. You know, I'm a double degree teacher, I'm retired. And I, I see this stuff and it's making me a little bit crazy. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Amy. Thank you. Tom Leff? Amy, I was just gonna follow up with you there. One quick thing to note is the, the school board is a wholly separate entity too. For, so like those discussions about combining the schools, very, very different um, as far as pathway. But I would encourage you to reach out if you have an interest with Mike Alcock, who has is runs Southside Stay. And he's usually on these meetings. He's not here today, it looks like. But he runs Southside Stay. He's been really engaged on that subject um, and would be happy to have you both, you know, for Southside Stay and with the Area Commission Education Committee. We actually have a full committee that works around those issues and he loves to have more people. So if you have an interest, we can hook you up with him. Thank you for that, Tom. Okay, I don't see any other hands raised, but uh, before we let Tony go, are there any additional questions? All right, fantastic. In that case- I do, I do know, Jeff, we are having another zoning um, uh, training session coming up. Um, so when you see that, please sign up for it. Uh, we do try to make it slightly interesting. Zoning can put you to sleep some days. Uh, but it also, I also do a piece that talks about the three parts for building and zoning services so that everybody can kind of get a full wraparound understanding. Besides zoning, we have two other sections that are just as important in different fashions for how things are developed in the city. So um, I, if I knew the date off the top of my head, I'd give it to you, but it'll be around. I, try, I trust uh, the uh, liaison to get that out. 
Sorry about that. Thank you so much. We will definitely share that information as well um, when we have it. So thank you so much for being here tonight, Tony. That was very helpful. Yeah. Uh, looking forward to sharing the slides on our website. I'm sure there are a lot of folks who aren't here tonight who will, will also be interested. So we appreciate you. Thank you again. Thanks for the time. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. All right, everyone. Uh, Eric is here, so we're going to go ahead and jump into our treasurer's report, um, and then we'll circle back later uh, for our, our audit of 2020. But Eric, if you want to take it away, I'll go ahead and pull it up on the screen. Okay, excellent. Thanks, and sorry for uh, being a little bit late, guys. Um, so we will start off on the balance sheet. So the checking account, um, uh, we have around $2,300. Savings still holding tight at $20,000 and then petty cash remains unchanged at eight fifty nine. dollars um, I will point out the checking account uh, balance is down, um, you know, from what we've been significantly been used to. Um, we've had several uh, um, kind of high dollar expenses that we'll go to in de detail here in a second on the income statement. Um, the other thing that I would point out on the balance sheet is the scholarship fund um, is down to two, is down to uh, 93 cents. Um, so we finally were able to disperse the scholarships from um, 2020 um, to the recipients. So um, there was a little bit of um, some communication glitches um, there, but we finally were able to make contact and got those funds distributed. So we're excited for that. Um, also being some of the um, expenses that we had. So. Any questions on the balance sheet? Okay, then if we switch over to the income statement, um, still continue to see you know, steady memberships coming, residential memberships coming in, um, households still um, being the, the largest contributor there. We have about $240 worth of household memberships that have come through this past month. Um, we did see uh, receive some of the um, community um, reward donations. So we got $84 from Kroger um, and then $10 from Amazon Smile. So again, if anybody has either of those two rewards programs and you'd like to sign up, you can link your account to Marine Village and then they'll um, send us um, a percentage of the proceeds from what they've collected or from your purchases uh, every year. Um, so moving on, uh, we did not have any merchandise sales, um, so total income was around $400 for the month. Um, the expenses, so moving into that, we did have our normal uh, monthly expenses with rent and utilities. Those are pretty straightforward. Um, we also had some uh, miscellaneous supplies, um, um, $83 there. Um, and then the, the big, bigger dollar items come in um, in the other um, categories. So technology, we did have our annual subscription for the accounting software at $360. Um, and then we did disperse this month um, $1,000 for the scholarship recipient. We did the other $1,000 last month. Um, and then the other piece is the, if you remember, we did this Southwood Elementary fundraiser. Um, so the way that works is we collect the money through the Facebook um, fundraising um, app, I guess, if you will, or, or kind of um, program that they have. Um, so we disperse that money but have not collected it yet, if that makes sense. So Facebook will send us the, the funds at a later time, but we had to get that money over to, to Southwood Elementary. So we went ahead and dispersed that out, and then once, but we do expect that to come back in. Um, so other than that, that, that would, that would have changed our net loss, um, to about, um, 20, uh, $1,700, um, dollars there. So, um, and we do expect to get a little bit, I think we raised 1900 and we only dispersed, um, 1500. So we're going to hold the rest of that into an education fund, um, that we can use for other kind of education related, you know, either, uh, donations or uh, contributions to uh, different, you know, elementary or high school um, activities. Any questions on the income statement? Okay, great. Thanks, Jess. 
Thanks, Eric. And just a quick uh, point to the comment Eric made earlier about Amazon Smile and um, the Kroger Rewards. We do have a page on our website dedicated um, to those reward programs with just some basic information of how you can sign up for them. So if you're not currently signed up for the programs and you use Amazon, which I think most of us do, or you shop at Kroger and you'd like to get signed up, you can head over to our website and that'll give you some instructions on how to do that. All right, uh, so we're going to move on here. I'm going to let Lauren Cardoni take the floor and introduce the variance application we have for this evening. This is for 318 Hanford Street. Um, I will let folks know if you've attended our meetings before, tonight's uh, zoning review and vote process will look a little bit different. We've made some improvements to our process. Uh, so we've got 15 minutes allotted for this total. We'll spend the first five minutes with the applicant presenting to us about the variances that they're requesting. We will actually spend the second five minutes gathering questions from folks. So Lauren will have a document up on the screen where she will actually uh, type out the questions that you're asking at that time. We'll gather those first and then we'll spend the final five minutes with the applicant answering all of those questions. Um, that should help us eliminate duplication to questions and, and keep everything streamlined. Once that's finished, we'll go ahead and go through the voting process and uh, see where everything lies. So Lauren, go ahead and take it away. Thanks, Jess. Uh, so we will be looking at um, 318 Hanford, as Jess mentioned. Um, they are looking to construct a carriage house on the rear of the parcel. And I will put the um, application number in the chat for anyone who needs it, but we have Matt Mutchler on the line who will be presenting for us this evening. Thank you, Lauren. Uh, so we are seeking uh, approval to, uh, to build a detached carriage house on the, uh, I guess in the rear yard of an existing single family house. The, Um, I'm going to share the screen just to pull the map up. That'd be easier to talk through. The uh, the main house sits in the front. Uh, no proposed construction is is anticipated on that at the time. The carriage house is in the back, uh, facing a rear alley to the uh, the north side of the property. Uh, the carriage house will be first floor garage. Uh, with three included parking spaces and a second floor single bedroom uh, living space. The variances that are required for such a development in the uh, current zoning district, uh, one include two residences on uh, one parcel. Um, this is not uncommon for the area being a kind of mid-density area. Uh, you know, two units on one parcel. There are, are numerous uh, multi-unit and duplex uh, complex or housing developments in on similar size lots. Um, this lot is actually even a little bit larger. It's about a lot and a half based on the uh, existing structures to the north. Um, the second type of main variance would be the a, a residence facing an alley and not a public street. Uh, this is just a result of, of having a carriage house. The desire to have uh, the carriage house um, comes from uh, a consideration that uh, Anthony was mentioning that kind of is, is a zoning code issue that, that we feel. Uh, so a lot of his presentation, I feel like uh, will kind of directly, this is the practical application of what he's, he's asking. Uh, we wouldn't need a variance to increase density uh, or not even increase density because it's actually still below the required uh, total development cover that we're asking for. We're just increasing the number of units on a house. We're not even increasing the, the footprint for those units. Uh, the, uh, so we provide a, a second living space uh, with a included parking on, on existing lot, uh, not asking for, uh, not increasing the, you know, overall development cover by, by any means. Um, the existing structure is detached in order to, uh, the owner would like to add solar panels to the roof 
for the main house and the detached structure to use. So that also falls into the, you know, self-sustaining sustainability approach for the city. So uh, we feel this is a uh, example of, uh, of responsible development within the community to kind of increase increase what is obviously a glaring need. Uh, Marion Village and the the area along Hanford Street is a uh, we feel like it's a very desirable location, and there's just uh, not enough of uh, affordable and and good housing to go along. So adding a, a single bedroom unit is the uh, request that uh, we're making. Um, all other variances, uh, the city asked, we have a few of them that just kind of correct uh, existing issues with the main house. Um, they were, there's no, nothing we're really doing about those. Uh, so the side yard one, uh, the, and the, uh, uh, variances don't really apply uh, to the the new structure at all. Uh, the new structure's main main ones uh, variance requested are, like I said, the having two structures on one lot, which isn't uncommon for the area if it was a attached duplex. Uh, it's just that the fact that there is a detached structure with kind of a courtyard in the middle, um, and then having a a resident face or a, an alley, but the area is very common to have, you know, most houses along uh, Hanford have a rear detached garage. Uh, this one currently does not, so uh, not asking for you know, a footprint that uh, wouldn't, wouldn't currently exist. Um, with that, uh, we will move along to uh, gather the questions. Thank you so much. Okay, I'm going to, uh, if we're going to go ahead and stop your screen share, and then Lauren is going to pull up uh, her document on the screen. So folks, if you have questions and you want to use the hand raise feature, I'll call on you. Uh, yep, I'll get you in just one second, Amy. And then, so we will gather the questions first, and then we'll have Matt respond to all of them um, at the end. So uh, first, Amy, go right ahead. Amy, you are currently muted. Sorry. There we go. Perfect. Um, so this doesn't look so bad so far because there are a lot of uh, houses in the area that have double um, housing for grandparents and in-laws and all that stuff. But I'm curious: um, are you may you are main you are maintaining green space in between? Is that right? There is a yard. Is that what I saw between the the house and the and the carriage house in the back? Is that true? So we're going to gather the questions first, Amy, and then we're going to have him answer everything at the end. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other questions? I don't see any hands raised currently. Okay, it appears that yes, may... There oh. is one in chat. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, yes, there is one in chat. Let me just see that here. Uh, so Lauren, if you just want to grab the question uh, from chat, there's one you can add to the, the document there from Alan. Uh, other than that, I don't see the other hands raised, so it looks like we will just have uh, those questions and we'll let Matt respond to them. Uh, the answer to the first question is yes, green space and yard will be maintained between the two residences. Um, also, the city currently allows for 50% of the total lot to be covered with building footprint. We're only asking, we're not even asking for a variance for that. Uh, we're only, be, we'll be covering 34% of the, the total site. So that's not even one of the variances. And uh, so more than adequate green space will be maintained. Perfect, thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. So I see the question in um, chat is a question about whether or not the structure is a and b um, So our voting here tonight is actually specific only to the vote, the variances that are listed um, in the application. We actually do not have the ability to vote on the use for the property. Um, so you can certainly answer that question if you'd like to, Matt, if you have that information, um, but that's not going to be part of our voting process tonight. The desired use of the uh, uh, apartment second floor living space has not been decided by the owner. Um, uh, they have uh, um, potential use for family members, um, having uh, their mother 
come live in that uh, second floor unit um, or there would be the option to have it uh, be just kind of infill development uh, to help fill a need for uh, affordable housing, affordable, sustainable, sustainable housing in the area. So use hasn't been decided yet. Thank you very much, Matt. Okay, um, I don't see any additional hands raised. Uh, so if no one has any further questions, then we would typically proceed now to the voting portion. I believe there another one did pop up. The oh, uh, let's see here. The uh, uh, backing out of the parking. Um, that's not one of the variances that we need. So the city requires 20 feet for uh, car maneuverability, and we have more than 20 feet applicable with counting the alley. So that's not. Uh, we're, we're not asking for that variance. Great, thank you very much. Okay, all right, so uh, I will be running through everyone's names that I see here on the screen based on my, um, my document here um, with membership records. We'll go through and just capture everyone's vote. Um, as you can see here, the, the variances are listed on the document Lauren has on the screen. They are listed number one through eight. So um, you can choose to vote on all of the items as one at once, whether you're voting yes or no. Um, if you have a yes or no vote specific to certain items, please just let me know when I get to you and I'll document those individually. Uh, so let's go down here. First name I see, I've got Allison Wilford. Sure. Hi, <laughs> Allison. So what are your votes? Yes. Okay. On all eight? Yeah. Thank you. All right. Just going to document these quickly, folks. It'll go a little faster after this. Okay. Amy Ivanoff? You are currently muted, Amy. Sorry. I'm still mulling, but I believe my, my vote would be yes. Okay. To all eight items? I think I made it down to six. Okay, okay. Well, I'll go ahead and get you down. And if anything changes, just let me know. Thank you. Of course. Uh, let's see here. Next, we have Camille Gill. Yes, on all. Thank you, Camille. Okay. Aaron Sink. Yes, to all. Thank you very much. Jeff Succi. Uh, yes to all. Thanks, Jeff. Jen O'Connor. Uh, yes to all, and I'm with Matt, and he's also yes to all. Thank you both. Let me grab that quickly here. Okay, great. Uh, Kevin Parzich. Uh, yes to all. Thanks, Kevin. Lauren Cardoni. Yes to all, and Chris is here as well. Go yes. right ahead, Chris. Thank yeah. you very much. Okay. All right. Mark Huckabee? No, I don't think Mark is with yeah. us any longer. Yes to all, and okay. Lewis is here, and he's yes to all also. Okay, thank you very much. One second here. All right. Tom Less? Yes to all. Thank you. Okay. And Eric Stegmuller. Yes to all. Thanks, Eric. Okay, almost through here, folks. Let's see. Okay, I believe I've gotten everyone. Is there anyone else uh, here with us tonight that believes that you should have current voting rights that I missed? That would be you, John. You're you're a member here. Okay. Okay. Hi, Jess. This is Alan. Do I know, do we know so, Alan, you did register, but in order to vote tonight, there is a 21-day waiting period. Uh, you would have needed to uh, register by February 11th, and you did not until February 22nd. So, unfortunately, you're just not able to vote tonight, um, but we'll have voting rights next month. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay. I think we've captured everyone. So, if that is the case, we have uh, 
all of the items are the same. We have 14 yes votes across the board. So thank you, everyone. Thank you so much for presenting tonight, Matt. We do appreciate you being here. And thanks for working through this process of voting with us, everyone. Uh, we appreciate your patience. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks again. Okay. So we will move on to our next item, uh, committee updates. Uh, we don't have Christian here tonight, who's our current chair for the beautification committee. Um, I will just update to say that Christian gave us a great presentation uh, last week, or I'm sorry, last month rather, with some uh, interesting ideas for revitalizing that beautification committee. And following that meeting, he got several um, folks who are interested in volunteering to participate, which is fantastic. We love to see that. So if you are also interested in volunteering with the beautification committee, uh, just let us know. You can email the board or you can actually email beautification at marionvillage.org and that'll go straight over to Christian. Uh, otherwise, nothing from the membership committee or social tonight since those are kind of on hold at the time. Um, and other than that, Lauren, do you have anything specific you'd like to talk about for zoning other than what we've covered? Um, maybe it's just worth mentioning we are also looking at updating the zoning requirements um, as far as it, um, we get a lot of requests in that are for existing conditions on the property. So I think Matt pointed out a couple of those on the uh, proposal we just saw. Um, a lot of existing homes are built within the setback um, as required by code. So there are some cases where we'll see applications um, that are simply requesting variances for those existing conditions. Um, so we're trying to simplify our zoning process for the association um, by having the zoning committee review those requests, um, pass a recommendation along to the board, and then have the board vote on um, whether or not it passes up to the Southside Area Commission. Um, so the association will not vote on those, um, but we will at least mention them in the meetings. Perfect. Thank you, Lauren. Um, so if you've been around for a while, you're probably familiar um, with the, the, the process we have for reviewing demolitions of non-primary structures. So if someone wants to, you know, demolish a garage or um, something that maybe was a garage at one point and doesn't resemble one anymore, those typically just go um, through the committee and then are recommended to the board how, how we should proceed. And then the board will vote on that rather than doing a full presentation and vote with the membership. So what Lauren just described, it would basically be handled the same way. Um, that's not to say that there may not be a situation where the zoning committee feels that it should come before the membership anyway. Um, since it would be purely for re requests that are existing conditions only, that's very unlikely, but we will be letting you know that they, that they happen uh, the following month, so. You'll be aware, we just won't have a formal presentation process since it's just for existing. Any questions on that? Oh, Erin, yes, sorry, almost missed you. Thanks. Um, I might be remembering this incorrectly, but I know we discussed this, um, probably I think Tony was still the zoning chair at that point. I thought maybe we had voted to allow the board to do those um, reviews and provide that recommendation for the existing condition only um, variances. Um, but maybe I'm incorrect about that. We, we kind of, some of us remembered the same thing. We did have record of that for the demolition portion. Um, we couldn't find anything specific to the existing conditions only. Um, not to say that it, it maybe didn't happen, but we just didn't have it documented. So we wanted to, to kind of formalize it. Um, and we will, we will certainly do that and put that into our document on the website that kind of breaks down our zoning process for everyone, just so it is formalized. Okay. All right. Anything else, Lauren? I think that was probably it, but just want to double check. Yep, that's it. Wait. Thanks. Great. Thanks so much. Huh? Um, you did. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so let's see here. Let me go to the next item. Okay, Eric, if you'd like to introduce, um, it looks, I think Matt's here tonight uh, with regard to the 2020 audit and the volunteer committee who handled that for us. Um, thanks, Jess. Yeah. So there we have a constitutional requirement 
in our by bylaws that we have an audit every year. I will say since I've been in part of Miriam Village and definitely since I've been the treasurer, we have not had that. Um, uh, but I, the board was reviewing, trying to keep track of all the things that we needed to do. And we noticed this one is kind of the last page of the constitution, um, yeah, kind of gets overlooked by some of the other more high profile um, sections. So anyways, we um, have received two volunteers um, to be on the audit committee this, this year. Um, we completed that, or I should say, they completed their, their review um, last night. Um, we've been working over the last uh, month or so, um, sharing information and um, answering questions, et cetera. So I think Matt is here. Um, Matt and Lena were on the audit committee. And I think uh, Lena, unfortunately, she's uh, taking some classes at night and one of them happened to be um, tonight. So she wasn't able to, to attend, but I think Matt is here um, and is gonna get the readout of the report. Thanks, Eric. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Matt. Uh, Lena and I exchanged emails with Eric providing documents of the financial statements and reports of the Marion Village Association for 2020, which ran January 1st, 2020 through December 31st, 2020, uh, including detailed transaction reviews and all the monthly documents he post on the meetings. Um, in our opinion, first and foremost, we want to thank Eric for all the work he puts into this. Um, there is a lot in the accounting part of this that uh, doesn't automatically tie to bank statements and sometimes as much as cash transactions for membership fees and whatnot. So thanks, Eric, a lot for the amount of time and effort you put in, into this. But uh, upon our review of the financial statements referred to above, present, fair, and in all material aspects, the financial position of the Marion Vis Village Association as of December 31st, um, everything was in line. Uh, all of the grant money was consolidated. Uh, a lot of the transactions from the websites are now tied to our uh, accounting software that helps Eric out and provides these template reports. Um, with putting so much time and effort into this, we thought the best approach would to be recommend for consideration. Um, number one, perform, perform quarterly reconciliation between the bank statements and our uh, good software that we use. Uh, what's the name of that again, Eric? It's Aplos. Aplos to ensure uh, providing any differences in net balances um, because of the little interest we gain in some manual transaction Eric has to make. Sometimes it's off by pennies. So um, another thing that we thought we could save money on or review were the usage of Square, Stripe, and any other payment method. Uh, Eric mentioned we haven't done this in quite some time as an association to see where some of these websites take some fees, um, we could look into possibly sending out uh, quotes for different options or membership fees and donations. So for every $10, they keep 82 cents or something a little above 8%. Um, and that makes the accounting a lot more work and difficult to be able to balance out perfectly each quarter. So um, this is an annual fiscal audit and we just wanted to pass on our review and information and wanted to thank Eric for all the work he puts into this. Thank you, Matt. Um, and thank you and Lena for um, kind of diving into the battles of accounting and finance um, over the last kind of several weeks. So definitely, definitely appreciate the, uh, the involvement there. Um, so like Matt said that there are two recommendations that he shared with me and the board. Um, we're going to take those under consideration. I think they're both um, um, definitely reasonable. Um, and so we can give a report out, um, you know, back um, on, on that. I, I would say the, the, the quarterly tie-outs is definitely something I'll commit to doing. And then I think we can discuss 
you know, other options now that were that potentially may be available and, um, you know, partners, um, uh, technology partners that we use that maybe weren't available when we initially did, you know, sign up and, and start using all of them. So we can absolutely, you know, take that under, um, take that under advisement. So any, any questions for, for Matt or myself regarding the recent, um, you know, audit activity? Okay. Right. Well, thank you again, Matt, and uh, thanks, Selena, who um, is not here, but definitely um, thanks to her as well. Thanks so much, everyone. Okay, moving on. This is just your friendly monthly reminder that we are still looking to fill um, the role of secretary on our board. Our previous secretary did move away and uh, had to resign her position. So we have a um, vacancy currently in that role, and um, anyone who would end up filling that role would do so until the end of the current term, which ends this year. So um, they would be secretary through the end of December and then for the first couple days of January um, for next year, unless they were very interested in running again and then maybe longer. Uh, if you are interested in filling that role, you just need to be a current member of the association. You can nominate yourself or another member through our website. Um, we would then announce that nomination to the membership and go through a process just to vote and confirm um, at the next monthly meeting. So looking forward to getting a volunteer or so to uh, nominate themselves to fill that role. It's a very important role in the association. So we're very, very hopeful that someone will be interested in filling it. All right, a uh, quick reminder that we have a, an event coming up here in in the nearish future so our spring yard sale community yard sale will be held on saturday may 1st um, we did cancel the spring yard sale last year uh, as we were just a couple of months into the pandemic and weren't really sure you know what was happening and, and the best way to to proceed with things and i believe at that time ohio actually did um, require that yard sales be canceled so we did not hold a spring sale, but we did hold one in October. We issued to all of our sellers and to folks who were attending um, the current documentation that was issued by the state for, for safety in order to keep everybody safe while they were out yard sailing. So we'll be doing that again this year. You can look at our, uh, follow our social media. We'll be launching the sign up form for that soon. If you're a member of the association, you can register your Marion Village home or business to be on the community map for free. If you're not a member, uh, you should be. And otherwise, it's $5 to register for the map. Um, because we did not have a physical location to pick up maps in October, we did not print them. And that went very well, actually. People can certainly download and print the map from the website or you could use the map on your phone, but it does save the association costs if we aren't printing a map. So we won't be doing that again uh, this year because it, it did work for folks. Um, if you do register, you'll also get a yard sign, which we deliver uh, the week before the actual sales. So look forward to that. Exciting to see what people have been gathering while we've all been cleaning our homes for a year. So, because we've been home. Let's see here. Uh, moving on, the 2021 Southside Scholarship um, Committee is underway and so are our fundraising efforts. We just launched the fundraiser for the scholarship on Monday around noon or one. Um, we set an initial goal of $2,000. That was just a little bit less than what we raised last year from the chili cook-off and an online fundraiser. And that would help us to fund potentially at least two scholarships of $1,000 to two different kids um, who are Southside residents who attend school at South High School. We, as of today, uh, we have already hit our initial goal of $2,000 in less than two days or, or just just over two days eric is clapping <laughs> pretty incredible honestly um we've we've now bumped that goal up um, what that will do is it will allow the scholarship committee to potentially look at awarding additional recipients or maybe increasing the amount of the award um, depending on how much we raise we're basically going to keep that fundraiser open until the end of april so the sky's the limit. Um, I'll go ahead and share the link to that fundraiser in chat. It is a Facebook fundraiser. Um, we chose to use this format because Facebook actually does allow us to uh, raise funds that they will then 
issue to us completely free of fees. So we don't pay a fee, donors don't pay a fee, they just collect the funds and in about, I think it's 75 to 90 days, they then issue a check to us as a nonprofit. So pretty incredible. It's great to be able to raise those funds without um, you know, paying a fee, kind of like what Matt was mentioning when it comes to the different payment processors we use. So this is a great tool. If you don't have Facebook and you'd like to contribute, please feel free to contact us. We'd be more than happy to um, accept checks. Um, we can definitely coordinate with you if you'd like to contribute but are not a Facebook user. Uh, otherwise, we're really excited about that. I don't know that we have anyone from our scholarship review committee here tonight. Allison, is Rada by chance with you? She's not. Okay, okay. I mean. You want me to get, I can get her and she can talk later. Well, I know they, yeah, if we, I know they met, um, they yeah, had their I mean, first I, meeting. I'll have her come up if you can come back to that. In a Absolutely. Perfect. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay. So when Rada comes in in a few, she'll give us an update just to let us know how their first meeting went. They'll be making some changes to the application that'll get launched soon. And then uh, kids will have the opportunity to start applying. So Allison will just let us know when Rada is available. Uh, let's see here. I'll just make a quick plug. If you're not familiar, the United Way partners with uh, Community Development for All People for each year to do the Southside Neighborhood Leadership Academy. This is a great program to get involved in if you're just interested in getting more involved in your neighborhood and your community. If you want to learn more about leadership tactics and how to network with folks and connect and, and benefit everyone. Um, I actually went through this two, two classes ago. Uh, Mike Alcock, who's with Southside Stay, he's gone through the process. Um, it's it's fantastic. It's you get to meet people from all throughout the South Side. You learn so much. There's wonderful presenters. If you're interested in participating, um, the applications are open until March 19th. I'll also put that in the chat. And I'm going to jump back and let Rada give us a quick update on uh, the scholarship committee and what they just discussed. Sorry, our dog is being crazy. Right, so Lauren, Stacy, myself and Mike met earlier this week and we basically rewrote some of the questions in, in the actual application. We felt the questions were great. We just wanted a little bit more prompting and, and wanted to give the um, students a little bit more meat to go on. Just to, you know, one of the things we discovered last year is that we were not measuring things across correctly. And part of that, I shouldn't say correctly, consistently, because I think of the way the applications were actually written. We uncovered that students had a choice between which question to answer. We didn't realize they didn't all consistently have the same questions to answer. So we made a few tweaks and the goal is to get that application out ASAP, like within a, a week or two, uh, within the next week. And I think Lauren will be working um, just with you on that. Our goal now is to um, work together to figure out a good metric by which to measure the application process um, and the applications that come in. Can you, Allison, can you please lower that? Sorry, I'm like <laughs> talking into a void because I don't see anybody, um, by which things come in so that we have a consistent way of providing feedback and assessing how we choose um, who the winner is. That being said, a couple of things that we suggested from last year was to also provide some feedback for those that win down the road. If we can get additional help, we'd like to provide feedback for everyone that submits an application because we thought that could be a really good learning opportunity. And also to provide some encouragement for them along the way, whether or not they um, win the scholarship in this regard. Mike is also working with I Think I Can program to see if anybody there would be willing to help students write the essays or at least kind of assess and provide feedback prior to the application. We think uh, we got started on that a little too late. So if that doesn't happen this year, we're, we'll see if we could offer that as an option next year. Kind of like when you go to a college and there's, you know, a career writing center, it just helps students learn along the way. 
Was that helpful? That was Did very helpful. Sense? Yes. Okay. Thank you so much, Rada. <laughs> um, and yeah. so next month, if you'd like to give an update again, that'd be great. Or, or Lauren or Mike, whoever, that was so helpful. Thank you so much for sharing that. I, I think it's really um, great when people can kind of understand and hear how that process is going because there's a lot to it. I mean, there's a lot of coordination and, and making sure, like you said, that the questions are asked in a way that makes sense and, and works for the kids. So we, we really appreciate you guys so much. We know this is a lot of work, but we were so excited that that, that this process is growing and um, that everyone is is involved. So yeah, thank you. thank you so much. We appreciate all of your help through this process. And Lauren's basically facilitating uh, our group in, in this effort. And we're just thankful that she could help us, <laughs> you know, move the process forward. Um, currently, I think April 30th is set to be the deadline for the submission of the applications. Am I still correct on that? Awesome. Maybe not. <laughs> oh, I, I, I think we have the, we do have the fundraiser set to end April 30th. I think okay. that um, it probably depends once you guys are communicating more with the, mm -hmm. with the school, if, if they have, I know they have a, an award ceremony each year for the kids and they, they have an opportunity to kind of announce, you know, which scholarships mm -hmm. they've gotten. So I don't know if that changes the timeline, but that probably is about right at the end of April. Yeah. That's, that's my guess. And this being said, not to take up too much more of all of your time, but if anybody on the call right now is somebody who enjoys grading essays and is great, you know, in editing and wants to volunteer a little bit of their time, we'd be open to that opportunity. So I just wanted to put that out there. Absolutely. <laughs> I can see there's so many takers already. <laughs> hey, this is Mark. I'll help with that. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Mark. Okay, Mark, we will be in touch. Um, <laughs> Jess, well, what is the best way? I'll connect okay. you guys. Yep. Yeah. I'll and get you Allison just said she has your info. Oh, so perfect. Mark, okay. thank you. Everybody heard it. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks. And so there was a question I got in chat that asked whether or not the scholarship info and process was on the website. Um, nothing is up yet, but once we have the, uh, the application is, is virtual. So once that application is ready for this year, we'll certainly have that available on our website. Um, and then, you know, we'll, we'll chat with the committee, but yes, maybe we'll also just have some bullet points of kind of what the process looks like. Certainly the deadlines on our website as well, just so folks can kind of check in and, and know how that works. Okay, great. Does anybody have any questions about the scholarship before we move on? Okay, wonderful. Thanks so much again to the committee. We're, we're really excited to, uh, to see how many applications we get and how many scholarships we're able to reward this year. All right, I'm just going to introduce this and then I'm going to kind of ask Erin if she'll, if she'll jump in here. Um, the next item on the agenda is the Urban Infrastructure Revitalization Fund uh, and they're looking for community project ideas. So Erin, if you just wanna let folks know what that is and, and kind of let them know maybe what kind of suggestions you're looking for, we'll then gather all that together. Absolutely. Um... Hi, everybody. Uh, Aaron Sink. Uh, nice to see you all again. I chair the Public Services Committee for the Area Commission. And um, one of the things that uh, we have traditionally worked on in the past uh, is pulling together uh, the community input for various um, capital improvement programs across the South Side, uh, one of which is the Urban Infrastructure Revitalization Fund. And so uh, this um, is a dedicated stream of funding that the city appropriates um, every year that's focused on the pre-1950s boundaries of the city, um, realizing uh, not too terribly long ago that uh, those areas had aging infrastructure. Um, this kind of goes back, you think about the annexation that Tony was talking about at the beginning of the meeting. Um, so it's that, that core city that the infrastructure was a little older and knowing that we needed to reinvest in that to keep those neighborhoods uh, sort of vibrant and that infrastructure up to date. Uh, so there's a special stream for that. This isn't the only stream that invests in uh, this neighborhood infrastructure, but it's sort of one and it's one that has, um, I think a great case for uh, robust community involvement. Uh, so, they, we do these plans for the area on about five year timeframes. And um, I was taking a look at our uh, current one that we're working on and we have a lot of projects ticked off on the list as complete, um, which means that we should, it's time to start thinking about what we wanna add to that list of projects moving forward. And so um, that's really what the ask is here today. Some examples of things that we've done 
uh, in the last five or six years through the Urban Infrastructure, Urban Infrastructure Revitalization Fund or the UIRF um, include things like uh, sidewalk improvements or installations, um, streetscape improvements such as street lights, um, street trees, uh, curb improvements um, in the park space. We've seen um, exercise equipment, playgrounds, basketball courts, things like that added or improved through the UIRF fund. Uh, we've seen things like bicycle boulevards, um, share roads and bike lanes uh, added to uh, streets. Um, so that, that's kind of the flavor of the type of thing that we're looking at in general. Um, when we're talking about it. So the committee is looking to get recommendations from all the civic associations, other neighborhood um, organizations, community groups, um, working in the South side, so we can compile a list and uh, be ready to roll when we get to that next planning process. So it would be super helpful uh, to have recommendations by um, April 7th, and then the committee can start to, to look at those and try and prioritize those. And I'll say all of that kind of comes on top of the um, park improvements planning that uh, we had done. So uh, back in late 2019, we went to all the 13 parks in the South Side, um, made a list of improvements and um, kind of prioritized them based on um, need. And so uh, we are working through that, both through the city's capital improvements plan, um, but a couple of those things could make their way onto um, a UIRF plan as well. So uh, we do have some of that feedback already. So those things are definitely still in the hopper. But so that's really what we're looking for. So um, any suggestions, um, you know, you can send them through the board, you can send them to me directly. Um, you know, my email is eesynk at gmail. Um, and so happy to, to take a look at those. Um, just quickly, Erin, there is a question in chat about the bike boulevard markings on Hanford. Do you happen to know the answer to that? Um, so uh, I don't know that off the top of my head, but I don't think we need to do that through UIRF. I think we could just do a 311 uh, request to have them come back out and um, repaint that since the, the markings have been torn up. I noticed that the other day when I was just walking down there. Fantastic. I so, see another um, one about high visibility crosswalks, which are a personal favorite of mine. So um, <laughs> the more specific we can be, uh, the better too. So if there are specific locations that um, we, we want to see that, that would be helpful. Um, Lauren, I remember that uh, when we were looking at the parks, we definitely talked about high vis crosswalks around Moeller Park, but I'm guessing um, there's a whole host of other spots that um, better crosswalk markings might be a huge improvement. Um, I know I've heard folks when it comes to that talk about, um, you know, Whittier at Brock. Um, I know there's some folks uh, or some places over on um, Champion in Ohio. Um, definitely, uh, we hear it a lot about Parsons, and there is actually a study underway currently to look at um, kind of pedestrian improvements and crosswalks that might be needed um, all along the Parsons corridor through the south side. Well, thank you very much. I never would have presented any of that uh, in as much detail because I just, that's a lot of information. So thank you for that. Uh, so if you want to email Aaron directly, um, if you want to email us, you can just send your suggestions to mva at marionvillage.org. We'll definitely get those over to Aaron. Um, and I think you said the 7th of April, right? Before that? Yeah, that would okay. be great. Make sure everybody had, every civic had enough time to meet at least great. once and talk about it. And then um, we'll go from there. There's no kind of hard deadline where we're going to, we have a plan that we're going to improve. So if it comes in a little late, not a problem. That was just trying to get us focused. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Uh, well, then I'll just move right into Aaron, maybe you, maybe Tom, whichever one of you want to go first, we'll go into the Southside Area Commission updates. I'll, I'll start. Um, I think the First thing that I want to highlight is at our last meeting, uh, we seated our first ever youth commissioner. So that was a, a new seat that was added um, during our uh, bylaws process last spring. Um, we wanted to get some the input of you know kind of the, the kids and the young people that live in the area. So it's a seat specifically for someone under the age of 18 at their appointment. Uh, so yes. Uh, 
Cosme, I might be saying his last name wrong, um, but he uh, joined, he'll be sworn in next month. So I think that's a, a really great thing and everybody was really pleased. He has a lot of letters of recommendations from folks around the South Side. He's an impressive uh, young man. So I'm really pleased to have him uh, join us. And I am probably forgetting a lot of other stuff. So I will turn it over to Tom now to catch all the things that I missed. Oh man, it's rough on me. No um, pressure. Yeah, so I think a lot of the stuff um, that we've had since last meeting would be we held our annual planning meeting. I don't know if we talked about that at the last MBA meeting or where the dates lined up, but we held that meeting, um, talked a little about some revamping a few of our procedures, including some of our zoning procedures as well to try to um, move things along a little bit faster, much as MVA has discussed, particularly for things with their existing condition. You know, we're just permitting houses that have been there for a hundred years. So, you know, we don't need to spend a ton of time presenting on it. Um, from my committee standpoint, which is the safety, health, welfare, and equity one, we did um, pass our uh, training requirement piece. So I will upload that in case it is is of interest to anybody, or I will try to hear uh, when my computer allows me to. Um, but the intent there was to give some background around zoning um, to all of our commissioners, but also um, broaden that perspective a little bit to include things like uh, you know history of how uh, our zoning laws came to be, um, some of the issues and with equity and affordable housing that are in our current zoning. Um, requirements and, you know, Tony Celebrezzi talked a little about that too. Um, but, you know, uh, some history around redlining, um, how, how all the neighborhoods developed. Um, so there's a lot of uh, nice videos in there. We're going to do some in-person training later in the year, but um, for the moment, that's what we're stuck with. So I will upload that um, or at least attempt to. And if I can't, then I will, oh no, looks like it's working. So hopefully that came through. <clears throat> That's got some links to what we're doing. It's about four hours worth of, of stuff broken between five minute videos to at max about an hour long. Um, and then there's some additional reading stuff behind it. So if anyone's interested in, in zoning or some of those history, um, inequality, equity, affordable housing issues, um, I'd recommend taking a look at some of those things. Thank you, Tom. Uh, there is a question in chat. Is the Southside Area Commission the group that approved the church on Marcuson and Welch plans that were voted down here? Uh, so I, I think that means like that were there were some votes against here uh, at the association meeting. So um, one of the things to understand with the process, we any vote taken here is a recommendation to the Area Commission. The Area Commission then takes a vote as a recommendation only to the either council or the development commission, depending on what type of uh, application it is. All of these are non-binding recommendations. So I do believe that one is still up to go before the development commission. If you would like to speak about it there, you're certainly welcome to uh, attend and speak against the project if that is what you so choose. Thank you. And I, th I think that answered the question, Jeff, um, but if not, please let us know. Okay, fantastic. Well, Tom and Aaron, thank you for your updates as usual. Um, we'll move on here. Uh, the only item I've got listed right now on the community activities and events on our agenda is the next Southside Area Commission meeting, um, also currently held virtually. That'll be Tuesday, March 23rd, starting at 6.30 p.m. I know you can watch that typically from the Area Commission Facebook, and then there is a link uh, in the Facebook um, group as well that takes you to their Zoom meeting. So uh, anyone can can watch those meetings as well. Let's see here. Uh, Tom or Aaron, it looks like there's one more question for, on that. Would that be the 323 meeting? Is that the date of the city meeting? Do you know? I will check on that okay. um, and uh, while you're talking and try to post it in here. Okay. If I confirm. And I'll, I'll send the link to like how to join or ask to request to be a speaker on it too. Awesome. Thank you. And actually, Tom, maybe I'll just go ahead and I'll, if there's a general link for that for, for, becoming a speaker at the meetings, I'll go ahead and share that on um, our zoning committee webpage. That's something that folks want to 
to do in the future. If there's, if you know of a good resource for those meetings, I'd be happy to put it there so that folks know where to get to it. Um, like okay. Regarding, um, our next, the area commission's next meeting is just looking at the calendar, you know, we're the fourth Tuesday. So that is the 23rd. Mm -hmm. uh, so if that was kind of what you're asking about, that is the meeting, except that we have scheduled a special meeting uh, for a variance on Lockbourne and Freebus um, that we're going to be hearing on the 10th. I think that's next Wednesday. Today. Thank you for that. Is that the empty lot there? Is that what you're talking about? The special meeting on Freebus and Lockbourne? Yes, it's in, I think it's an empty lot um, right there on the corner. Um, the proposed development is a Dollar General store. Oh gosh. Okay. Yes, I did confirm by the way, it is the 323 meeting. Um, and I will put a link as to where those can be found um, in the chat here. So thanks for that, Tom. So there's the um, the link to it. If you go down to the bottom, you can see the meeting agenda. And the East Markison is number two in the set, so at least you're close to the front. Um, these meetings can go quite long. Um, and then I think there should be a link there as well for um, requesting to be a speaker for or against. Great, thank you so much. Okay, last item we have on our agenda is just the open floor portion. So if anyone has anything they'd like to talk about, any questions, any concerns, uh, you just wanna say hello. Anyone at all? I, I do, sorry, I'm having trouble raising my hand. Nope. Go ahead, Allison. Uh, um, Amy, I see your hand up and I'll get you next as well. So you've heard me talk about, I'm Allison Wilford. You've heard me talk about the story time at Walker Park. And we have kind of um, settled on the first four dates. So we are hoping to start April 12th. Uh, then it would be bi-weekly, so it'd be 26th, May 10th, May 24th. I'm still kind of struggling with the time. I don't know if anybody has any input as far as um, what might be a good time. If it's 5, if it's 4.30, if it's 5.30, 6, 6.30. What do you guys think? Are so those on Saturdays? Oh, yeah, what day is that? are those? Oh, sorry, Monday. Oh, Monday. Oh, okay. So I tr I, what I thought we could do is start with Mondays um, because that's a good day for me, and I am probably going to be the one making sure that it's happening. Um, so we want to start with Mondays, and then once we see who's coming – and we can kind of survey them and see how they feel. And if we need to, if we need to switch the days, then um, we just get a helper or whatever. Rada can do it. Um, don't tell her I said that. Um, so I thought we could do that. I've already talked to some folks in Hungarian Village and they're super excited. I'm going to make some flyers and um, pass them out and I can give it to you so you guys can have it or I can print them for you as well. Um, and then I'm going to make some yard signs that we can stick out um, outside and, and hopefully leave a, a white space where we can write on with like a dry erase marker. And that way, if the time changes or the day changes, we can just write it on. So that's the plan. Um, we've got a lot of people interested in reading. Um, so if you'd like to read, let me know and we'll get you on the calendar. Uh, my plan is to make a Google Drive folder with the calendar so people can just go in there and sign up um, or let us know and we can sign them up. So um, look, look for more on that hopefully next week. And if you have questions, feel free to uh, let me know. I mean, just my, my two cents is probably the earlier, the better, just because, but after, so between school and supper, it's like the sweet spot, right? So, mm -hmm. um, or you're, 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 you may get readers, but you won't get listeners. Um, so yeah. that's just probably, but I don't have kids. <laughs> in middle disclosure, so. I've been surveying I, I the children. I've been making it all up, so. Yeah, I've been making notes. I, I don't see too many children, but I do see some. And so I've been kind of making mental notes as to where those children are. And I'll go to their house and give them a flyer and hope, hope they'll come. Um, and then I've got some, you know, good champions over in Hungarian village again, who know a lot of people, um, over there and will, uh, share the news. 
Awesome. awesome. And I'm sure Mike, I don't know how, and I'm speaking for him right now, but I'm sure Mike would stay. There's probably some outlets they know of that can right. get us in front of the kids as well. So, And we, we've we connected, um, Ann and Mike and I have shared emails over the last several awesome. weeks. And um, I've emailed a, a librarian that he recommended I reach out to. Um, and then we're hoping to connect it to the summer reading program. Uh, so they could have like an event or whatever at our read our story time. And then I'm trying to reach out to uh, the librarian at Southwood um, and Seabert. So I just need to hopefully Mike can get me those names. So also we've, this got, we've got um, just to keep in mind, we've got those little mini chairs, oh, uh, yeah. little kitty chairs in the info center and mm -hmm. all the blankets. So That's right. um, if you want to leverage borrow those um we probably just move the chairs at least into your little um storage building if you have them yeah we're not, we're not using any mini chairs um, <laughs> right you think they'd fit maybe i'll come grab one they'll, and they'll stack them. up so they'll yeah. stack, i mean you think it would um, fit the width wise though like it would you could we could stack them yeah they're pretty well, little yeah, we could try i mean i can you know okay we can see or we cool. can just figure out how to like grab them and take them over there, you know, take turns, take them over yeah. there if they don't, okay. if they don't fit. Okay, cool. I feel like they will, though. Help right. put the little building together. So I feel like it was big enough for so many chairs stacked in yeah. here. I don't know what you filled it up with since then. So it's not, like, it doesn't have anything in it because we need to move it to the back. Um, mm -hmm. But we did, we just have some uh, garden tools that'll go in there, um, but not too much. It's currently in my garage, so I just need to get that moved so I can get it out of there. Oh, okay. yeah, just let me know. Cool. Um, I felt like I thought of one more thing, and now I don't remember. So, well, I'm gonna. I'll ahead. go to Amy, and then if you think yeah, about go it, ahead. don't go away and just come sure. on back. Sure. Okay, Amy, we'll just unmute you here. Yeah, just you know, it'll come back to you. I trust. Believe me. Um, I just wanted to throw this out because I heard someone else groan when you said something about the uh, Dollar General. Uh, we all know what those do to communities in terms of. Um, the ability to purchase healthy food and, and things like that. I don't know how it works. How do you, how do those people, how do you, how do you get someone with a better selection for healthier things to come to a place like that and, and, build, and put a store in a, you know, even an IGA would be, I would think would be more preferable to serve the community. Yeah. So those are all great points. I know the, it's located within the Deschler Park Civic Association area and um, District 5 of the Area Commission. Mm -hmm. um, the Park Civic Association voted very, very strongly against the project. Um, you know, I won't speak for other commissioners. I know I have concerns um, for that same reason. The, the residents have brought it up. There's a Dollar General on Lockport and I think less than a mile away. Um, and so right. I think there are concerns there. Um, some of those things, you know, we've brought it up because the Dollar Generals in the South Side haven't been particularly good neighbors um, and how they've kept their property. So I think that that's weighing on all of our minds um, going into this. You know, if, if you're a good neighbor, I think many of us are more willing to give you room and variance. Um, the way that they're citing the building um, doesn't align with the commercial overlay that's trying to make sure that um, Lockbourne is a kind of pedestrian friendly walkable street. Um, the city staff in their reports um, noted that as an issue for them and made some recommendations about how they'd prefer to see the building cited. So, you know, that's been an issue that's been talked about. Um, I don't know, you know, I, I would struggle to make a prediction on how the area commission would vote, but um, I think all of those things are, you know, have been issues and why it's taken a little while on this project to, um, for, for both the Civic Association and the Area Commission to, to work some things out. We delayed it a couple of times because we didn't have good staff report information and, and those things were weighing heavy. So um, now those reports and the traffic studies and the comments from the city are back. So I think we're gonna move forward and um, we'll, we'll see how it goes. But if if the vote is to approve it, my I, I guess my guess would be it would be close if it does go that way. But um, I said, I'm not going to speculate <laughs> on how it will go, but all of those things have been, um, there's been a lot of robust discussion about all those kinds of issues with this particular project. You know, it's like a, an open air market, closed building is, you know, combination kind of thing. 
we don't have a lot of control over, you know, sometimes those kind of things because the property owner does have the right to develop yeah. the property. I will say if this had been something else, it probably would have gotten approval without too much issue. But for what it is, I think in the issues that have been seen by the, by the area with them over the past however many years, I think are really why you're seeing you know, everyone kind of leaning a lot more towards the disapprove on this one. And conjecture there a little bit, but that's kind of my take on it. On, on the facts of like a building, strip away what it is, but a building um, probably would not have seen as much criticism as the fact that it is a Dollar General. Yep. Okay. Isn't, well, that, isn't that a land bank property? Not that I'm aware of. I thought it was because I had a client interested in it like last year. And um, I think I contacted the land bank. Perhaps it was and now it's Somebody purchased. bought it. Yeah. Dollar General. No, it's, it's something I'll keep in mind and maybe ask and see if I can get clarification before it comes before us on the 10th. But I had that. We'll, we'll find out. And just a quick note, uh, apologies to Jeff, the meeting is on 311, not 323. So if you, if you go to the website, that's that's the right date. <laughs> as, a, as a resident with the concern of the Dollar General, would it be helpful to like take pictures of other Dollar Generals in the neighborhood showing how nasty it is? <laughs> I'd be willing to go do that and send them to you, Aaron, if that's something that you guys could use. I always call them and report all the trash, them and the Dollar Tree. I take pictures and send it to their social media, email, anybody that'll listen. And I say, I'm going to go back in a week and check it. And if you don't <laughs> clean it up, I'm going to post this right on your public page. It gets well, cleaned up. Thank you, Allison, for that public service. Um, yeah, feel free to send photos. I'm happy to circulate them to the, the rest of the commissioners. Um, you're kind of, I, I kind of agree with Tom here that I think the winds may be blowing in the direction against it. For many, for that reason, in general, um, because of what it is and their relationship here, so I think you probably have a sympathetic ear from the commission. Um, but having that ammo um, ready to go may be useful in future steps in the process. Yeah, I'll yeah, say. I remember back when we had used to have the block watch um, meetings, and with with these meetings, Officer Medley was also saying how those were kind of like. <laughs> I don't want to say nuisance properties, right, but non-responsive corporate owners, um, you know, as far as trying to address some of the things that the police have been seeing as well. Sorry, Tom, I think I interrupted. No, 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 no worries. Um, I will say that uh, at our last commission meeting where they were in front of us, the environmental court had a representative there for just this reason. <laughs> so, you know, just throwing it out there. That, that's uh, been a pretty known uh, fact that they have not been necessarily the best neighbors, so. Thank you for sharing that with us. Uh, Allison, did, did you remember what else you were going to say? No, sorry. Okay, well, it happens. There's always Thank you, though. Month. I appreciate you checking. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, anyone else? Anything to share before we adjourn tonight? Okay, looks like that's it then. Everybody, thank you so much for being here tonight. We hope to see you all next month. Uh, until then, keep following us on our social pages. And if you haven't yet, go donate to our scholarship fundraiser. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great thanks, night. Jess. Bye, everybody. Have a good night. Bye.